what's up everyone just a quick heads up next week the weekly roundup will not be coming out until thursday the earliest uh, i had a, i had about three options to go with here option number one was to not release it at all which i absolutely did not want to do option number two was to release like a half-baked version of it which i also did not want to do or option three was just to do it late and make sure it came out at 100 percent just a little bit later uh sorry it's only gonna be a couple days off i'm, I'm shooting for thursday if it ends up being friday I apologize, but I am going on vacation, so I'm not really apologizing at the same time. Uh, but <laughs> but just look forward to it next week. It's going to be later in the week, closer to unfortunately when the matches are going to go off. And I and I, I just didn't want to put out a version of it that just was not up to the standard that you guys have gotten used to. Uh, so I, I apologize. It's going to come out late, but it is going to come out. I'll do my best to make sure that at, at least. Hopefully, I'm shooting for Thursday, so hopefully I'm able to get it out then. Uh, Landon was gracious enough to uh, tell me that, you know, he's cool with recording later. So, fortunately, we, sh we should be able to get it out. We should be able to get it out. Point is, but I hope you guys enjoy this week's roundup. While you are here, be sure to leave a like and subscribe. How's it going, everyone? Welcome to the week three roundup for the Elite Battle League. My name is Lonely Hermit, and of course, I am joined by my co-host, Landon, aka Inferno Man, how are you doing today, my good sir? I am doing pretty good. I had to work an hour late than I was supposed to, but that's because apparently people think it's too hot, which I think you'd find humorous because it's only like 70 degrees here. Oh god, that's nothing. <laughs> <laughs> and I had to work an hour late because people refused to come in because it was too hot. Ridiculous. Yeah, should try living here. Uh, <laughs> uh, before we get into the matches, before we start talking about them, of course, check out all the coaches in the description down below. Go watch the matches from week three. Uh, be sure to get all caught up on all that good stuff. And like I always say, pick a team. Maybe you, you know, you always watch a certain creator that's in the league right now. Uh, go ahead and support their team. You know, show them some love in the comments and show them some love in the league. Yes. Uh, and also, our socials are, I'm pointing the wrong way, our socials are in the description down below as well. Um, so it'd be nice if you leave a like, subscribe, of course, go to subscribe to Landon. I keep pointing the wrong way. <laughs> uh, <laughs> but this week was full of some intense matches. And this week also has a theme. Uh, this is the week of the hacks uh, because, my goodness, it was crazy. Um, I think the match that I'm about to bring up right now probably had the biggest case of hacks. Um, arguably the, the last one that I'm going to bring up as well, but it's just like if hacks didn't happen, these two matches might have gone completely differently. But regardless, uh, first up, we have the Chicago Score Bunnies versus the Miami Dragonites. The Chicago Score Bunnies walked away with a win in that one uh, in a 5-3 fashion. That, that's the second match of the season for the Score Bunnies where they uh, were pushed all the way to the time limit. Uh, and at the same time, still the other team was left with one mod in both those matches. Uh, I'd say... I'd argue the the score buddies match against Entes was a little bit closer when it came to the time limit because I feel like maybe if the time did run out, things might have gone differently. Uh, but at the same time, there was a huge, huge, huge burn that came in at some point during this match that changed the course of it. But before that, right away, this match uh, started off with Rayquaza uh, with Airlock, which was, you know, every team so far that has played against the score buddies has brought something to try and counter that uh, drizzle. Um, and of course, the score buddies led with Drizzle Kyogre to get up the rain. Whatever you probably, I, I, I would have expected Pelipper, but started with the, with the Kyogre, and I believe that did kind of throw the Dragonites off a little bit. Uh, but right away, it was intense. It, it started kind of like when the square buddies played Dante's. It was a lot of switches, a lot of movements. But then I think the biggest part of the match uh, came when the Dragonite sent in Scizor. Scizor sets up a couple uh, sword dances, uh, then it gets burned by the Squall from Pelipper, which that's one hack, hacks, but it, it really didn't matter because turns out the Scizor had Baton Pass. Uh, so Scizor Baton Passes out to Rayquaza, Rayquaza comes in plus four, but then the second straight burn from a Squall from Pelipper comes in. And I think that honestly was a huge turning point in the match, because if you think well, for those of you who don't know, burn actually halves the attacks uh, of your moves. Like it, it halves the attack. Uh, so for a plus four Rayquaza to get burned was huge because that was the difference. In my opinion, that was the difference between the Dragonites keeping Rayquaza alive and doing everything they could to keep it alive 
and just letting it die to the Kyogre's Ice Beam. That was just a huge turning point in the match because after that, was it was mostly trying to stall on the Dragonite's part, uh, trying to stall the score bunnies, but there's really not a whole much we could do. We also did see Sunny Day Chlorophyll Venusaur, which actually did a bit of work. I'll give it that. It did quite a bit of work. Uh, and also the Toxic Packs that the Dragonite ha had was really annoying because it had Regenerator, Recover, and Toxic. Um, but ultimately, it just was not enough. The Cinderace, Ace of Cinderace, who's the leading, who's leading uh, the league in everything right now, pretty much, uh, took out Kyogre, but it got baited out and killed by uh, Ludicolo. So ultimately, and then ultimately it came down to Toxapex just stalling to the end of the match, to the end of the time limit, uh, because the Square Bunnies couldn't kill it fast enough. Um, so ultimately it was that, I, I, in my opinion, the, the turning point was the Rayquaza getting burnt, and that's the reason why this match flipped on its head. Uh, what were your thoughts when you were uh, going through this match here? So, um, first of all, I just want to say, like, this, in terms of how intense it was, I'd say this match was definitely satisfactory to how <laughs> yes. we were expecting it to be. Uh, yeah. With both of the number one teams facing off head to head, it's, mm -hmm. there had to be something major. Um, I, th I think that this was like the one match where I was on the edge of my seat the entire time, just seeing what Guanaco would do and, and seeing uh, what out of pocket thing Crobats was going to use next. Um, if you're watching Guanaco's perspective, then you know that he was talking about how he was uh, nervous as soon as the battle started because he wasn't expecting Crobats to start off with Shizu, the Kyogre. Yeah. Um, so, you know, even though he brought out his Rayquaza, he was still very nervous that he was starting with the Legendary, so, mm -hmm. um, he didn't know what to do from there, but he, he still tried his best, he did a really good match. I, I usually, like, when, when, um, I watch the, uh, matches, uh, the coaches know this, I comment, um, I'm leaving all my comments for the roundup, I'll let you know how I feel about it in that, um, but for this one, on Guanacos, only on Guanacos for this week, I told him, um, fantastic job this week i know that you lost but you still did a really awesome job it was really down to you know really i think that the part that really like was just like how did you know that was when um when guanaco had gigantamaxed ace and um uh -huh. and crobax dynamaxed the the ludicolo he dynamaxed yeah. ludicolo so he could use a, a max waterfall and get the drizzle going again because Guanaco at that point had killed both of his drizzle users. Yeah. Um, so, you know, that was the strat with that, but then he ended up pulling out another strat where Guanaco tried to use uh, Max Airstream turning into water, uh, flying type because of Libero. Yeah. And then Crobats then um, using Protect. I think it was Protect. No, well, it was yeah. Dynamax, well, so it was basically Yeah, first he used Guard and then, and then. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, and then like next turn, he takes advantage of the fact that that Ace is now a flying type and uses uh, Max Hailstorm, which was like, I literally gasped out loud at that moment. Yeah. I was like, bro, the absolute stress with that one. Like, I I'm sorry, Crobats. I was on Guanaco's side. I've been I've been Team Guanaco this whole season, but. Um, fantastic job, fantastic strats. This was probably my favorite match this week, and all of them were intense. So, yeah. um, what what a match! What a match! I, I'm just sad it came down to that burn. Honestly, yeah. you know, for it being honestly. a title match, for them both being tied first, it sucks. Because, it, like I said, but the burn on the scissor is hacks, but it really wasn't a big deal because it was gonna baton pass anyway. But the burner Rayquaza is like, what if Rayquaza doesn't get burned? How is Crobat's going to deal with a plus four Rayquaza? Like, how is he going to deal with that? But it was still like, even then, even when Rayquaza went down, I said that's that was a huge turning point because it was. It was a big momentum shift. But at the same time, the Dragonite still stayed in the match as long as they did and managed to stall out. Like I said, Venusaur came in and did work. Ace tried, but like you, you broke down the play. It got baited out and taken down. Uh, for by the way it's first death of the season uh, which is crazy we are three matches in it's barely died once uh after eight straight kills uh leading the league for the season mvp but that match does leave the chicago score bunnies with the being the only undefeated team still in the league with a 3-0 record they are plus seven right now uh the dragonites are joint second 
uh, with a two and one record, they are currently plus three for their differential. So not the end of the world for the Dragonites. Obviously, they still have been performing incredibly well. So this this is just one to take on a chin. You move on to next week. I really wouldn't I really wouldn't dwell on this loss too much. Um, he's taken on chin. Move on to next week. I know I could see it in the video that it hit Guaneco hard uh, for a second there because he, he took a second just like kind of collecting his thoughts. Um, but this is just one you got to take on the chin because uh, he still played really, really well. This is this is a couple things go differently. It's a different match. So GG's to both guys. And like Landon said, this was an incredibly <laughs> intense, intense, intense match. Um, but moving on to the second match Hold of the on. week, we had the... Wait, what? I just wanted to mention this oh, just ahead, because we just talked about the most major match of the week. Um, I just want to bring attention to the fact that I'm already training for next season of the EBL. And I, I, as you guys have known this entire season with me talking, I, I know barely anything about BDC. I was very, like, I was thinking about joining the EBL as a coach this season, but I, I didn't think I was good enough. And then after seeing Derek going in, all these guys doing a great job, I'm just deciding to join next season. And uh, I have a total of one competitively trained Mon, and I'm very, very <laughs> proud of it. Just wanted to bring Woo. attention to that, that's all. <laughs> <Woo>. <laughs> Let's go. Um, Oh, you spoke on it because because I brought up Kentucky, huh? Mm -hmm. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> so we had the Kentucky Kinglers versus the Detroit Luxuries. Again, the Luxuries lose in a 6-3 fashion to the Kinglers. Uh, and kind of the way we talked about it last week is kind of how it played out. However, the Luxuries did kind of switch it up this time. Uh, they started with Metagross this time around, and it was a little bit of, of a different story. Uh, but at the same time, the Kinglers started with Dracovish. Now... I saw some people saying, you know, it's it's a pretty big deal, Dracovish going down um, when it did. But for me, well, essentially what happened is Dracovish and Metagross start off. Dracovish, uh, I'm sorry, Metagross outspeeds Dracovish, gets the EQ off, but Dracovish obviously hits harder on the Metagross uh, because it's super effective and takes down the Metagross. But then the next turn, I don't remember what came out after that, but um, it killed Dracovish. And I saw people saying that that was huge. But in my opinion, that it was a huge kill, but in my opinion, Derek hasn't really used Dracovish. He hasn't really prioritized Dracovish on his team. So for me, it was kind of like, okay, he's probably got something else up his sleeve. There's no way he would just let Dracovish go down like that um, to Metagross. If he, or, you know, get down to red to Metagross instead of just switching. He had to have had a backup plan because he really hasn't... I'm not going to say he hasn't utilized Dracovish, but it's not been the center of his team at all. Um, I think it has, like two, three kills, something like that. And it's died, I think, in every match so far, um, except maybe the first week. Uh, so it has really been a huge, huge uh, focus on, of his team. Um, then, however, Derek decided to bring in Mimikyu on, I believe it was the Galarian Moltres. Um, and it Swords Dance, and it did work. It did quite a bit of work. Um, it ultimately only ended up with i believe yeah two kills uh but at the same time it it really disrupted the the luxury and i mean we kind of said it that uh it it was going to be tough for the luxury no matter what because derek's team is just it's just very strong like on paper you compare the kinglers to the luxuries and it's really not that close the kinglers have a very strong team in general but comparing the two, I mean, I feel like there's like for like uh, counters to everything the Luxury has. But at the same time, they still did well to disrupt the Kingler's plans here and there, especially Colossal. Colossal came in and helped to, to nullify Mimikyu for a bit. Uh, Haxorus had to end up coming in to finish the Mimikyu, but <laughs> it, freaking, it didn't make much of a difference, but it did live on one from a crunch from Haxorus, even though I think it was at like 20 HP or something like that, which is crazy. Um, but ultimately, it really wasn't enough. Haxorus, Haxorus eventually went down to, to something else. I can't remember what it was. On top. Oh, Darmanitan. Icicle Crash from Darmanitan. Uh, G-Max Colossal came up to bat uh, because he ended up switching out from Colossal to Haxorus and then back to Colossal after Haxorus died. Uh, and it held on, but it really couldn't do too much, especially after uh, the solo, by the way, solo week three MVP Heracross came in and finished off uh, Colossal with close combat. And then the Glare and Moltres came back in and it got stone edged. So ultimately, I think it was just a very strong showing from the Kinglers. 
Derek just looks like he's getting better and better. It looks like he's understanding it more. Uh, I just feel like the Luxury's kind of just got overpowered in this one. I'm not going to lie. Um, there were, I mean, there was just good plays on both sides. I just think the Luxury's got overpowered. Um, give me give me your thoughts on this matchup here. Um, um, first, when you said that you were going to talk about this match, like... The first thing that I thought about was Mimikyu living on one HP. That was that was my favorite part of the match. I really, really like that. Uh, but honestly, you know, at some point in the match, I don't remember when it was, but like I was, I was feeling like maybe Max was gonna win, and because hmm. um, well, he kind of responded to my my comment when I said that I was gonna leave all my comments for the the um, roundup, and he said something about you're in for a surprise, and I was like, oh, did Max win? Like, hmm. did he just spoil me? He didn't, but <laughs> he put it. He put in the effort, but like that's not why I thought he was gonna win. I don't remember when it was, but I was just like, oh my gosh, is Max gonna pull an Uno reverse card and then like after losing three Pokemon, bring around the match and then win? Because every single time like he takes three people's mons and then he loses. Yeah. But, so I was just like, is it gonna be the other way around? Because like for the first time ever, he didn't start with Moltres. He started with Metagross. Mm -hmm. So like, congrats to you, Max. But um yeah great match congrats to derek again uh for his second win um and yeah i, I enjoyed this one too a lot yeah it, it was it was entertaining until it just kind of felt like oh okay the king was the king was, are gonna win it yeah, um, <laughs> it was like, hurry, up, hurry up, Derek! Yeah, faster, yeah. rapid. Yeah. <laughs> I think <laughs> I think it was. Work. <laughs> yeah, that's true. That's true. If I had to point that out, freaking Derek was like, "I need to go to work after this match." <laughs> it's like, oh my god, of course. Um, but even before the Heracross came in and finished off the luxuries, I mean, there was there was a point where Mimikyu just Mimikyu just doing all the work um finally it just it was kind of in the same boat as dracovish where it was a focal point but not but like not really of the team but it came in and it did work it did what it had to do uh it, it controlled the flow of the match for a while there uh because a lot of the luxurious plans had to surround around taking down mimikyu before it could do too much damage but it was already kind of too late because it took out a couple big mons um galarian Moltres did try nasty plotting again uh towards the end but ultimately it really it wouldn't have made much of a difference uh because i believe yeah a nasty plot so this was the last turn of the of, of the battle actually glaring mulch just nasty plotted and then just took a fat stone edge from heracross um so it was it was tough to watch towards the end when you knew like ah damn like yeah the king Lords are gonna win this um but before that it really was pretty back and forth um but yeah it's it's tough for the luxury they are currently in six with an 0 3 record and a minus nine differential they are in quite the hole quite the hole right now uh the most i think they could get unless everyone starts losing above them is probably going to be fourth which would be more favorable than six because uh, if they remain in six they'd have to go against third place in the playoffs and that is obviously not as much of a favorable matchup because more than likely they're going to end up going against Kingler's Dragonites or the Score Bunnies. Uh, that's kind of how it's starting to shape up uh, a bit. Um, Just one v five max. See who wins. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, <laughs> um, but the other team that was joint second, I mentioned earlier that the Dragonites were joint second. The Kinglers uh, are also joint second with a two and run record. They are both plus three, so we have another tie again this week. Um, but I feel like the focus is a little bit more on the luxuries right now because they need to they need to get a win here uh, sooner rather than later. But moving on to the final matchup of week three, we have the Everglade Entes versus the Atlanta Braviary. I believe this one ended. Yeah, this one ended. It was a bit a bit of a, a one sided on on like just the score alone. It was a six two win. In favor of the Entes, speaking of teams that needed a win uh, for a momentum shift, the Entes finally got their first win of the season uh, in a 6-2 fashion, which was uh, pretty, pretty good. <laughs> um, because, and, and we talked about this, how how the Entes' losses have been so close, and it came back to help them because now they're back into a positive differential. Uh, they are plus one currently, so this win was actually really huge, just all overall for the stats, for, for momentum. It was a really big win. Uh, but 
uh, I feel bad for the baby here because it was a little bit of a rough one. Um, so I believe, yeah. So at one point, the Aegis, the, uh, the Braviary's Aegis Slash uh, tried setting up with Swords Dance, uh, but I believe it got paralyzed, fully paralyzed, um, and it ended up dying. So that was a big shift because <laughs> the setup mod goes down and Palkia is still allowed. I mean, uh, yeah, Palkia is still allowed, allowed to remain free. Um, I, I, I'm trying to remember what he, what, oh yeah, the Entei's led with Palkia, that's right, the Entei's did lead with Palkia, um, and it was just, it was just so back and forth in this matchup, uh, but there was a Thunder Wave from Blissey, from the Entei's, um, that was on Aegislash, and that's what allowed it, that's what got it fully paired, even though it was Swords Dance, and it ended up getting taken down, uh, Palkia killed the plus two Aegislash without taking a hit, which was huge, um, and there was a lot of switching of on the Braviary side because Lapras had to come in to try and negate um, the Palkia, which was which is which is a good plan. It was a very good plan because because Lapras is a pretty solid counter to it. On top of it, it had Dragon Pulse as well, um, so it would have it would have if it would have managed to hit the Palkia. Uh, but every single time Lapras came out, it forced the Palkia out, which is exactly what it was supposed to do. Um, however, at one point. Braviary bring in Mama Swine. Um, however, <laughs> I believe it was Rotom Wash that came in and got off a of Will O Wisp onto the Mama Swine. And even though Mama Swine got max, got like it was like plus three, I think, or something like that, it was doing like virtually no damage to the Rotom. It, it tried body pressing and max knuckling, and it just was not doing anything. Um, and that brings up the very interesting idea because when you're Playing against Fusa's team, I can see the frustration because it's so bulky and it's so hard to kill all of, any of his mons that it's just frustrating because you feel like you're not doing anything against his team. Uh, so I, I, I applaud the two gentlemen that were able to beat him in the last couple weeks because how you stay calm, cool, and collected is is, is really difficult. Um, but there was an early Dynamax on the Braviary side that kind of screwed Atlanta towards the end because it, it was no longer an option later on when the Entes ended up Dynamaxing. Uh, so it was not, it was really, it kind of came back to bite them. Um, I believe it was Nino King who ended up Dynamaxing later on. And Nino King was able to come in and scoop up three kills before going down. Uh, Nino King came up big there. But after Mamoswine went down, it was tough and once Lapras went down, it was Lapras was just the last line of defense for the Braviary because after that, it was just it was smooth sailing for the Entes, and they kind of cruised towards the end after Lapras went down. Um, uh, yeah, <laughs> it's just it was, it was an intense match until Mamoswine went down and it got burned and all that stuff happened. So, uh, what what's uh, what were you feeling while watching this match up here? Yeah, as as we've talked about last week. Um matt really gets into his matches so his emotions really show mm -hmm. um and like like you said with with foos and um you know staying calm and collected with battling him i was mm -hmm. kind of like waiting to see this match because i know that you know if matt was on the losing side side of this that he wasn't gonna he wasn't gonna you know keep it in so um, i was really trying to see you know um what matt's mindset was for the match how he would deal with Fusa's team, and yeah. fortunately he had a really good plan. He actually battled really well. Unfortunately, mm -hmm. it was the RNG that smacked him in the face and just yeah. absolutely stole his lunch money. <laughs> Put his underwear on a flagpole with him in it. Absolutely <laughs> destroyed his lifehood. So, um, congrats to <laughs> Fus on his first win of the season. But Matt, I'm sorry, man. I'm sorry. <laughs> Yeah, really, it was really hard. hard it was watch. hard to watch. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, like you said, his, his his emotions did come out um, because it's frustrating. It's frustrating when you feel like you can't do any damage against any of the Entei's bonds. Uh, I, I, I would I would get absolutely upset. You guys might yeah. see my emotions come out <laughs> next season because <laughs> yeah. And assuming someone picks up a bulky team, of course. Um, mm. But yeah, so this match left the Braviary with a 1-2 and two record. They are currently sitting in 5th with a minus 5 differential. And that pushed the Entes up to 4th 
uh one and two record and they are currently like i mentioned plus one so it was huge that even though they lost they kept those matches close because now they're positive and who knows if the dragonites lose uh if the kingos lose they might have the opportunity to, to leapfrog them in their next matchup here uh which could be a very favorable one i don't want to talk bad but uh i guess i'll bring that one up first i actually haven't written last but i'll bring that one up first heading into our predictions for week four the everglade entes versus the detroit luxuries um obviously things have not been pretty for detroit let's not sugarcoat it um they've lost all through their matches in a 6-3 fashion uh and are are in quite the hole however they need to get some kind of momentum going here in this matchup against the entes do i think it's the most favorable for them maybe not because i mean it's tough because the luxuries have, have offensive power it's just that like we've been saying the entes are so bulky every single mod just takes years years to kill so it's gonna be tough and and i think these last couple weeks are time for the luxuries to maybe try and experiment with new game plans uh new ideas new ways of going about it uh, because you're already in quite a, a little bit of a hole here so maybe it's time to experiment a bit or or try again let's try again with glaring mulches and see how that works um see if you could finally pull it off uh so i think this matchup is gonna be really tough more so for the luxuries the entes a win for the entes would actually be massive uh because again if the kinglers or the dragonites lose uh which actually one of them are going to one of them are going to lose because they play each other this week uh so an opportunity is here for the entes to jump into the top half of the league uh which would be massive because it's the difference between facing right now it's the difference between facing fifth place and facing sixth place so this is a huge matchup here uh the entes i feel like a little bit more pressure i, I feel like a lot more pressures on the entes right now i think that's the biggest advantage the luxuries have right now is there's really no pressure on them um there's always going to be more pressure on their opponents uh as it stands right now um so the luxuries are free to do whatever they want experiment do whatever they want like i said try again with glaring Moltres. try whatever uh else you think would be good for the team you know just just maybe trying to experiment heading into playoffs because if they can catch some momentum even if they lose if they lose the four six five six fashion um that's still some momentum to carry them into the next matchup uh what are your thoughts on this matchup here um yeah honestly um well bringing back to to Ma uh max and uh derek's match this week I just remember like them ending off and them rejoining the Discord call. Both of them were just like, "Hey, great match!" And Max yeah. was like, "Yeah, I lost again, but it was fun." Yeah. <laughs> um, I could definitely tell that Max is going to be come and collected against yeah. against Foos. He'd be mm. the one person to be. Uh, besides, I mean, they're maybe more or less so. I've seen him get angry at a Pokemon game before. Um, <laughs> I'm pretty <laughs> sure we both have. Yeah. <laughs> especially recording with him. Um, <laughs> uh but um yeah honestly it, it, with max not having pressure on him at all because of his record and you know the pressure being on foos because you know literally if anybody loses against max it's just gonna be like oh you're the first person that lost against to the detroit lux race how do you feel um <laughs> like everybody's gonna be like having their eyes on them um mm. so max max could just like be playing hopscotch in the middle of his match for all we know i mean like just i hope that he brings a, a massive play you know good mindset i know that he'll have a good mindset but just just hoping for for a good strategy for him i mean like foos you just got your first win give max his first win just just give up the <laughs> match just just go into the match let the timer run out with one Pokemon on your team down and just give him the win. No, I'm just kidding, but you know. I I, I am rooting for Max this week. Sorry, Foos. Congratulations on your first win, but it's gotta happen at some point, right? Yeah. <laughs> we can't I guess have an 05 record. That's that that was your job true. and you already failed, so <laughs> <laughs> I guess I guess this is the first uh matchup that we're not gonna agree because I I think the Entes are gonna take this one. I I don't wanna see the lectures lose every single game but who's biased now matt uh, bias i i just anti's just no. look I, uh, i'm I not know. calling you biased 
I think, oh. I think when Matt <laughs> was, was like, talking to us, he was calling me biased by oh. siding with your opinion yeah. every single time. <laughs> I don't want you to do the roundup next season because you're biased. Like, yeah, well, I wasn't <laughs> going to do it anyway, so... <laughs> <laughs> Um, I'm I'm gonna go with the end taste on this one. I think Foose is getting better with every single match that goes down. To be honest with you, he looks better and better. He looks like he's understanding his team more and more and more and more and more and more. So we're gonna disagree on this one. Uh, for once, I'm gonna go with the end taste, uh, for that matchup. Now, moving on from that one, I brought this one up uh, earlier. Oh, oh, I do have the commissioner's predictions here. These are straight from Stone Family 64. Actually, uh, he picked the Detroit Luxuries to win that matchup six Ooh. five. So, do with that what you will. Um, I have the other ones too, because he told me in the chat when I was streaming. Um, but the next matchup is uh, are the Kentucky Kinglers versus the Miami Dragonites. Now, this, these two are, of course, like we mentioned already um, a couple times, they are tied for second right now. And like we brought up with the last matchup, if one of them loses, there is a chance that they could drop as far as fourth. Um, so, that would be rough for them um if the braviaries get a 6-0 sweep there's a chance they could drop even further uh or if they just lose that bad um so this is kind of a match where if you lose you don't want to lose by a lot you want to lose a 6-4 in a 6-4 6-5 fashion you definitely don't want to lose by a lot um now the the same talking point i mean i know the the, the square buddies were able to nullify cinderace uh, but it's still very much a talking point for the Dragonites because it's so freaking good. Um, like we said earlier, eight straight kills before it finally died. So it's going to come down to what the Kinglers got to counter that. Um, what the Kinglers are going to are what the Kinglers are going to do to to nullify that Cinderace and or even Rayquaza or even if, if the Dragonites bring back Shuckle because unfortunately Shuckle didn't make an appearance this week. Um, <laughs> Or Toxapex as well, because we saw Toxapex today, or not today, in this matchup uh, for the Dragonites. Uh, they, Toxapex did some work. It, you know, like we, like we said in that match, a couple things go differently, that match goes differently, but Toxapex did some work. Um, so, I, I am leaning towards the Dragonites on this one. I feel like it's going to require a lot of testing on the Kingler's part, part to, to try to figure out a good counter. Because the Dragonites have, I mean, both teams, to be fair, have very well-rounded um, Pokemon uh, on their roster. But I, I just think, I don't know. I don't know. I, I, I think Derek's going to come up, going to have to come up with some very, with a very interesting and unique plan to try and counter Cinderace. Uh, but I'm leaning towards the Dragonites right now as it stands. Uh, how you how you feeling about this this second place matchup here? Yeah, I agree. Like Derek's Derek as the the newbie who thought that this was all just completely for fun and that he didn't have to put like any effort into it and just swinging it around, pulling it full circle, and then actually you know having a good season. Um, I think that he does have a chance to to take out um, a few Guanaco's mods. Yes. Yeah. Um, but do I think he's gonna win? Unfortunately, I have to say no. Um, unless he like pulls out the massive strat to just absolutely exactly. throw Guanaco for a loop. Yeah. Um, I mean, Guanaco's probably like peace pants afraid of ice types now. He's probably hoping that he's not going to bring up the Darn Um <laughs> True. Yeah. Um, but like, like even with Heracross having Stone Edge and you know how that was pretty famous this week, um, obviously, like what Guanaco would do there, he'd just use flying type yeah you know absolutely destroying hair across so you really if i was in Derek's spot I, i'd be like i have no idea what i'm gonna do like i'd spend the whole week trying to figure out how i'm gonna do this match so uh just because of how tough it is to like literally fight guanaco alone like not even thinking about whose team it is i'm just gonna have to hand it to guanaco because not just because I'm Team Detroit Luxrays. I'm not Detroit Luxrays. Why did I say that? <laughs> Miami Dragonites. I'm a big dum-dum. Maybe I was thinking about this week's match. I don't know. Um, I'm just going to say, Guanaco just has a very strong chance of winning this. Uh, and on, like I said, the goal for both teams is just to not lose by a lot. That's really it. Um, obviously, you want to win, but if you're going to lose, you don't want to lose by more than like two. Uh, because if you lose by any more than that, there's a chance you drop far into the table. Um, but one of these two, assuming 
if the Entes win, uh, one of these teams will be dropping to the bottom half. If the Entes lose and Bloodtrays win, um, one of these teams could still potentially drop uh, to the bottom half. It depends on how the Braviary do in their matchup. Um, but if the Entes do manage to win, it's more likely that they will leapfrog. But it, uh, it's 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 just a matter of don't lose by a lot. That's it. But the commissioner's prediction has one team kind of losing by a lot. Uh, the commissioner, Mr. Stone Family 64, chose the Miami Dragonites over the Kentucky Kinglers, winning in a 6-3 fashion, um, which would be rough. I feel like that'd be a bit of a rough matchup to watch. Um, but yeah, that's going to be a really interesting one. It's, the focus is going to be a little more on the Kinglers because you kind of you kind of have an idea of what the Dragonites are bringing. Uh, so the focus is going to be a little bit more on the Kinglers on what plan they can cook up uh, to try and take it down. I could definitely see Snorlax uh, making an appearance again because um, it didn't really get a chance in that week two matchup uh, against the Score Bunnies. So I think it'll probably get another chance again here. Um, we could definitely see Gengar. Uh, Darmanitan, like you mentioned, we could see that. Drake Vish and Mimikyu. I feel like that'll probably be a, a good lineup. Just first glance looking at it. Um, but yeah so that's gonna be that's gonna be a really fun one to watch a really another really fun one to watch uh by the way i did forget to mention in the last prediction here uh the luxuries are the only team that have not brought every single mon so you got to keep that in mind these last two weeks the luxuries do have to bring ribbon b or luxury or both uh in the same match whatever uh but ribbon b and luxury need to make an appearance at some point for the luxury so keep that in mind as well when it comes to that matchup um that could come in and play a huge factor into it uh, i forgot to bring that up my fault uh but moving on to the final prediction for week four we have the atlanta braviary versus the chicago score bunnies now it's it's a very interesting matchup here the score bunnies are rolling let's let's be honest here. the score bunnies are rolling right now uh they're currently 3-0 still undefeated uh and a loss wouldn't really shake up too too much um there's a chance they drop to uh there's a there's a good chance that they drop uh if they lose from that first place slot so that's another thing actually on hand for the last matchup between the kinglers and the dragon so if one of them win and the score buddies lose there's a chance for first place as well so just as much as there's a chance to drop to the bottom half of the table there's a there's a good chance to get to first as well so that's going to be a little bit more pressure on the Square Bunnies side. We brought this up kind of uh, this sort of theme in, with the Luxuries and the Entes. There's a little bit more pressure on the Square Bunnies because a loss could drop you out of first. Granted, there's still another week to get the spot back, but uh, you don't want to... I know the pressure's on, though. The pressure's on. The, the, the pressure's on for the Square Bunnies. You're at 3-0. You may as well finish the season undefeated. Um, so... At the same time, though, I feel like a loss will also be really good for them because then they can say, you know, that pressure's off. You know, we lost. We, we lost. You know, we can, you know, that pressure's off. We could just move on. Um, but looking at the teams, I mean, the score buttons just seem to have it figured out. <laughs> like, Crobats really seems to understand his team, the Drizzle team. Um, whereas the Braviary have, I, I, it kind of seems like they tried three different strategies. Um, obviously, it worked once. The other two times, not so much. Um, so... I'm curious. I'm curious to see if the trick room is finally going to be used, utilized, uh, because that was a huge talking point from Stone uh, before the season started, and we have yet to really see it uh, come to fruition. So I'm curious to see if they'll end up using it in this matchup. Uh, but I'm leaning towards. I mean, I, I kind of have to pick the favorite here. I, I'm leaning towards the Score Bunnies on this one. Uh, what, what you think? Uh, yeah, initially, like the first thing that I think about when looking at this matchup is that it's Meta versus Meta. One of them is using the, the Drizzle meta and the other one is using the Trick Room meta. Um, and again, like you said, we haven't really seen the Trick Room stuff from, from that. Um, so if yeah. this was, if there was any match where like, you know, we see it from, I think he might try to use that that to his advantage. Cause you know, the, the point of starting rain is to boost water type moves, mm -hmm. which is why Crobats' team is primarily water type. Um, I think, you know, with the bulky mons that that um, Matt has on his team, uh, mm -hmm. trick room, uh, trick room, like changing up the stats and stuff like that, I think it could really work for him. But again, like just thinking about like the record of the season and everything like that, and how good Crobats is, because like he even he said himself like we're we're like overhyping him and he doesn't think he's that good, but like he's literally in first place right now with zero losses and like 
blazing through everybody's teams. So like, yeah. I mean, he's taken down arguably three of the the toughest teams in the league, at yeah, least I... the Kinglers and the Dragonites. So I mean, and if you want to include Dante's as well, I would be more than glad to. Uh, the teams he's beaten have been no joke. So yeah, he he's ended the reign for Ace the Cinderace. So yeah, um, Matt has said him himself in uh the uh the group chat or the the server that um he's very nervous about this match himself um honestly if i were in his shoes i'd be the same way because yeah i i'm gonna have to go with crow that's for this match but if matt absolutely pulls it off he's gonna take a mighty finger that has i told you so written on it and just like i mean i guess you know he's agreeing with us so it wouldn't really be i told you so but like he would he would absolutely like brag about it for weeks. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> that'd be huge if the Bravery can manage to pull it off. But mm -hmm. the Score Bunnies win. I mean, that all but locks up first place, and uh, at least it should lock up a buy for them heading into playoffs. Because we are and not really talking about that because I have I haven't really brought it up. I wasn't really thinking about it. The playoffs are right around the corner. Uh, these are the last two weeks before we head into playoffs. So at the Score Bunnies win, they at least, at the very least, lock up a bye week more than likely uh first place as well so they'll get a more favorable matchup after their bye week in the playoffs um i guess that's another consequence as well from the kinglers and the dragonites uh that's the difference between a bye week and having to play uh that extra extra match um so a lot to play for this week i think we'll, we'll really start to get to see where the standings are going to be uh for playoffs uh at the end of this week uh, but the commissioner's prediction for that one, as you mentioned, uh, he said it himself. The coach of the Bravery said it himself that the score bunnies were going to win uh, in a 6-4 fashion, which I, I can agree with. I think it's going to be pretty close because Matt does have a pretty bulky team. Um, I know it kind of got ran through with the Entes, but still, regardless, it's still it's still a bulky team that can do damage. So I don't think this match is going to be a blowout by any means. If it is, the score bunnies 100% will lock up first place because they're already plus 7 so if they manage like a 6-1, 6-2, even a 6-3, they'll be at least plus 10. So they'll be more than enough in, in first place, assuming they don't get swept in the final week. Uh, there you go. I cursed you. Um, so yeah, these three, this is going to be really, really intense week. This is a huge week. Uh, just looking at playoffs with an eye on playoffs as well. A lot of pressure on certain teams to perform. Uh, and I'm really excited to get into this week. But that's going to be it for our week three i was gonna say week four our week three roundup uh again i mean we said it multiple times this was just such an intense week uh the week of the hacks unfortunately it changed the course of a couple of these matches but ultimately it was just so intense regardless <laughs> i mean it really really was uh but like i said that's gonna be it for this uh weekly roundup thank you guys so much for watching of course check out all the coaches in the description down below go watch the weekly matchups and of course stay stay tuned into their channels for the week four matchups as well and like i always say be sure to be sure to support <laughs> be sure to support. support be sure to support <laughs> be sure to support a team uh and show them some love or if you just want to watch the league as a whole by all means go ahead uh i'm Get sure none of the merch. coaches will complain get their merch if you can afford yeah. it don't push i say that but... I, say, I say that while holding up my casey sports shirt but yeah, get their, get their let's go <laughs> shout out casey's uh but oh quick note i probably should have mentioned this at the beginning i'll put it i'll probably put like a little thing at the beginning um next week's weekly roundup will be up a little bit later i'm looking towards hopefully thursday i can get it up uh, I'm not going to be in the state <laughs> to record and I don't want to give you guys like a weak version of it where I have to record for my dads or something like that. Um, I'd rather be home and hundred percent give you a hundred percent weekly roundup. Uh, so just a heads up for next week. I'll probably have put something at the beginning of the video as well. Um, just a heads up for you guys. Uh, my name is Lonely Hermit. Her Hermit. <laughs> I can't even get my own name right. <laughs> my name is Lonely Hermit. My socials are already in the description down below. Be sure to like, subscribe, uh, for my stuff uh and of course check out my beautiful co-host over there um a handsome co-host co uh his channel his links are all in the description down below as well and speaking of my co-host do you have any final words my good sir uh just just know speaking again about how i'm gonna be coached next season um my big plan is to have a real life size guy fieri cardboard cut out in the background of my videos and that's going to be my good luck charm that's all i want to say 
Okay, I like that. Cool. Yeah. He's gonna, he's gonna, I was gonna say he's gonna take you to flavor town every <laughs> uh, but thank you guys so much for watching i appreciate all of you like i said coaches links in the description all that good stuff uh we appreciate you guys thank you so much for watching we'll see you guys next week bye